Hello, my name is Douglas Laudenschlager, and I work on the documentation team for Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services. In this video, you're going to learn how to call a web service by using the web service task in Integration Services, and to use the results that you get back in an Integration Services package. As part of our demonstration, you'll learn to configure an HTTP Connection Manager for use by the task, to configure the web service task itself, to download the WSDL file that describes the web service, to call a web method and supply the expected input values, to read the return value by using an XML task, and finally, to use the results from the web service task in your package. Now let's get started. Here we are in Business Intelligence Development Studio, where I've already created an integration services project, opened the package, and added some of the components that we need for our demonstration. Before we work on our package, let's take a look at the web service that we're going to use. This is a free public web service that provides conver currency conversion rates. Let's copy the URL while we're here to use in a moment in our package. This web service exposes a single web method named conversion rate, and if we test this method by asking for the conversion rate from US dollars to European euros, the XML response that comes back is the very same response that our package will receive. Now let's go back to our package. The first thing that we need is to create some package variables. We'll create one named conversion rate response to hold the response from the web service, and another named conversion rate to hold the conversion rate that we're looking for. Because both of these will contain XML, they both need to be variables of type string. The next prerequisite for using the web service task is an HTTP connection manager that contains the URL for the remote service. Let's add a new HTTP connection and paste in the URL of the remote web service. Because we're going to need to download the web service's description language or WSDL file, we add the question mark WSDL at the end of the URL. Now let's save our connection manager, and we're ready to add the web service task itself. When we open the web service task editor, the first thing to do is assign the HTTP connection manager that we just created. Now we need to download the WSDL file that describes the, what the web service can do, but it's a quirk of the web service task that the download WSDL button is not enabled until you've selected a local file on your computer. So we're going to satisfy this requirement by creating an empty text document and naming it currencyconvertor.wsdl. Then in our task, we'll select the dummy document, change the value of overwrite WSDL from false to true, and now we can successfully download the WSDL file from the remote site. Now let's move to the input page of the editor. Thanks to the WSDL file, the task knows all about the web service. We can select our currency converter web service, select its single conversion rate method, and configure that method to provide the conversion rate between US dollars and European euros. Now let's move to the output page of the editor. We want to save our output not to a file but to a variable, to the variable that we named conversion rate response. Now let's save our web service task. The response that our task is going to receive is the very same XML document that we saw when we tested the web service online. From this we need to extract the conversion rate itself. For that purpose, we're going to add an XML task to our package. 
The XML task can do a lot of different things with XML documents, so it has a lot of properties to configure. The first thing we need to select, although it's not the first thing in the list, is the operation that we're going to perform. What we want to do is perform an XPath query against the XML. Our XML source is not in a file but in a variable in the variable that we named conversion rate response. Yes, we do want to save the result of our XPath operation. We want to save it not to a file but to a different variable, to the variable that we named conversion rate, and we want to replace any value that may be in the variable. We're going to type in our XPath query directly. What we're going to query for is the node named double, which as we saw contains the conversion rate that we want. And finally, the XPath operation that we're performing is an operation to return values. Now let's save our XML task and connect our tasks. I want to show you a useful technique for checking the value of package variables as the package runs. So let's set a breakpoint on the onPostExecute event of the XML task and go ahead and run our package. Now the package has paused at the breakpoint that we set and we can come down here to the locals window and examine the current value of any variable in the package. If we scroll down the list here we find in conversion rate response the long XML string that we expected and in conversion rate the value that we've extracted from it by using an XML task. If we'd like to see these two in a less cluttered list we can use the add watch command to add these two variables alone to the separate watch window. Now let's go back and run our package to completion and turn off debugging and go back and remove the breakpoint that we set temporarily. Now we're ready to hook up and re-enable the data flow task that I've already started to set up. First, we're going to use an OLEDB source component to extract data from a view in the AdventureWork sample database. We're going to get the last name and the year-to-date sales in US dollars for each salesperson in the database. Then we're going to use the conversion rate that we got from the web service to add a new column of data that converts the year-to-date sales into European euros. To add a new column, we use the derived column transformation. We'll name our new column sales YTD euros, add it as a new column, and its value will be the value of the year-to-date sales in US dollars times the conversion rate contained in our conversion rate variable. Since our variable is currently a string, first we need to cast it to an appropriate numeric value. Let's also use the round function to round the value of our expression to two decimal places and save our derived column transformation. We don't want to bother saving our sample data, so we're going to use a row count transformation to terminate the data flow. This is a handy shortcut and the only requirement is that you have to assign the row count to a package variable which you can ignore. Now let's add a data viewer to our data flow so we can see the results of our work as our package runs. We'll accept the default grid format. And now we're ready to run our finished package. After a few moments, we see that everything has worked as expected 
and our data now contains a new column with year-to-date sales converted from US dollars to euros thanks to the conversion rate that we easily obtained from a web service by using the web service task and the XML task. In this video, you learned how to call a web service by using the web service task in integration services and to use the results that you got back from the web service in your package. As part of that demonstration, we saw how to configure an HTTP connection manager to configure the web service task itself, to download the WSDL file that describes the web service, to call a web method and supply the expected input values, to read the return value by using an XML task, and finally, how to use the results from the web service in your integration services package. We hope that you've gained new information and useful skills from this video. After you close this video and return to the web page, you'll find some other integration services how-to videos that are available for you to watch. Thank you. Yeah.